for all of their beauty and power, determinants can be computationally annoying. But the good news is, if you know how to row reduce a matrix, you know how to compute a determinant. In this video, we'll walk through how. To calculate the determinant of a square matrix using elementary row operations, all we need to do is to row reduce the matrix paying careful attention to the steps that we're using that we're row reducing and the effect that each of those steps has on the determinant of the matrix. For example, for this 4x4 matrix, my first step in computing its determinant using this approach would be to find its row echelon form. In other words, the row reduced form of this matrix, which has all zeros underneath the diagonal, but for which we don't really care about the entries above the diagonal. So I might choose, for example, to swap the first and the fourth rows, to do this series of row additions to cancel out the subdiagonal entries in the first column, this row addition to cancel out the subdiagonal entries in the second column, and then in my last step, multiply the third row by negative four, and then add the rows together to eliminate the subdiagonal entry in the third column. So that was a quickly compressed version of the row operations that I've done to reduce this matrix into its upper triangular form. All the entries underneath the diagonal are zero. And notice that I've kept very careful track of the steps that I've used. And that's not just because I want my professor to give me full marks for the row reduction, but it's because we can trace those steps backwards, investigating their effect on the determinant to compute the determinant of this original matrix. For example, the row swap that we did on the first step here has a predictable effect on the determinant of a matrix. By properties of the determinant, anytime we swap two rows of a matrix, we reverse the sign of that determinant. So whatever my original determinant was, if I call it x, after this first step, the result of this determinant should be the opposite of x. Likewise, with all of the row additions that we did on this step, on this step, on the last step, all of those row additions have no effect on the determinant. So whatever the determinant of this matrix is, the determinant of the next matrix here will be exactly the same. So I'll put equal signs right there. And also here because this is a row addition, and also down here because that's a row addition as well. The only other step that changes my determinant is this step right here, where I've multiplied a row, row 3, in place by a constant. When I multiply a row by a constant and leave it in place, the determinant of the matrix is also multiplied by that same constant. So when I multiplied this third row by negative 4, the determinant of the matrix went up by a factor of negative 4 from here to there. So whatever this determinant was, this determinant will be negative 4 times as much. So why does this all help? This all helps because by the time we've gotten an upper triangular matrix, like this one here at the end, we know quickly how to compute the determinant of an upper triangular matrix. An upper triangular matrix has a determinant which is equal to the product of all the entries along its diagonal. And therefore, this matrix at the bottom will have its determinant equal to the product of 2 times 3 times negative 8 times negative 1, the entries on its diagonal. When we form that product, the result is 48. And we conclude that this matrix that we got at the end of our row reduction process has a determinant equal to 48. Now all we have to do is work our way backwards. If this matrix has a determinant of 48, and each of the steps that I needed to get to that matrix has a predictable effect on the determinant, tracing our steps backwards will tell us the determinant of the original matrix. If the original matrix had a determinant of x, then after step 1, this matrix would have determinant minus 1 times x, and so would this matrix, and so would that matrix, because those operations had no effect. Then this matrix would have had a determinant of negative 4 times negative x, or positive 4x, and this matrix at the end would have had determinant 4x. But we know the determinant of this matrix at the end was 48. Therefore, whatever this original determinant x was must satisfy the equation 48 is equal to 4x. Solving that equation gives us x equals 12. 
meaning that the determinant of this original matrix must have been 12. And that's all there is to this process. To find the determinant of a square matrix using row reduction, carefully row reduce the matrix into its upper triangular row echelon form, keeping careful record of each step that you take in the row reduction process. By the time the matrix has become upper triangular, all you then need to do is take the product of the entries on the diagonal to find its determinant. To relate that determinant back to the original, simply trace your steps backwards, which is always going to involve either undoing some multiplications by constants, like negative 4 in this case, and also undoing some multiplications by negative 1. So as long as you keep careful track of all of those multiplications that are introduced in your row reduction process, you can undo all of them simply to compute the determinant of the original matrix.